So I previously made way too many videos trying to explain how to set up Ableton and ASOLink Pro. Also, please don't skip. This is important. The thing is, they're always seemingly hard to follow. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just install everything from square one. So that way we're all on the same page. And the first thing is actually not having Ableton open, but going into this folder, which is going to be in the description. And when you go to this folder, I'm just gonna go to it right now. I really, really hope that what you do is you open up the Google Drive and then you just click everything needed click the drop down and click download and download the whole fucking thing because it's essential anyway let's open up ASOLink Pro we're gonna open ASOLinkPro.exe install the 16 stereo devices that is essential you have to do that next I agree next a driver thing is gonna pop up for you it says like install John Shield or whatever click yes on that I don't have to do that because I already had this before it's gonna say run ASOLink Pro tool turn that off and then finish it. After you've done that, go ahead and run the ASL Link Pro Patcher. All we have to do is 64 bit. And now it's done. Now we can open Ableton. Now, this is assuming you have a fresh install of Ableton, is what I just did. I have a video showing how to do it. Completely fresh install. The first thing I'm going to do is go to Options, Preferences, Audio, and I'm going to set the driver type to ASIO. After I set the driver type to ASIO, I'm going to select the device as ASI Link Pro. And then inside of the ASO driver, this is where you're going to select a couple things based on what you have. If you have an audio interface, you're going to select the interface's ASIO driver. For example, for me, it would be the Audient USB audio driver. However, if you have a USB microphone, you're going to set up ASO for all. Real quick, just for the people who are using USB mics, I'm going to go ahead and show how to use ASO for all. Uh, I'm going to put a timestamp to when I finish that for the people who have audio interfaces. So for our ASO for all guys, USB mic guys, we're going to go ahead and select ASO for all as our ASO Link Pro driver. Click OK. Now, if yours has a stroke like this, don't worry. It's because we haven't gone into it and told it what to do. Uh, I'm also using my Audient Evo 4 in this right now, which is what I'm using for OBS. So it's going to have a stroke, but I'll explain to you how it works anyway. So this is actually pretty simple. Now, when you first launch it, it's going to look a little bit more like this. You may have like the real tech driver selected or something. We're going to go ahead and click the advanced options at the bottom right. And that's going to open up the ability for us to edit the important things specifically uh, in this case, let's pretend that the Audient Evo 4 that I have, which is my audio interface, says Blue Yeti. Now, in an ideal world, what you'll want to do is plug your headphones into the Blue Yeti, assuming you have it. So that way, we can go in, we can set the microphone as the input, and the main output as the headphone. This way, we have a normal in and out inside of Ableton, and it kind of reads it as if it were an audio interface. If you don't have the ability to do that, say you have a Blue Yeti that, or like the Blue Yeti Mini or whatever, right? The Nano. The Nano doesn't have a headphone jack you have to select that open up the drop down thing here make sure only the microphone is selected not the output and I'll demonstrate that just to make it not confusing and we'll say the oculus is my headphones right well I would enable the oculus in this case it could be your Corsair or something whatever headphones you have and I'll only enable the speaker or the out of that this way I have my one input and my one output now there, so there's going to be various buffer size related things that you might want to change for example the lower the buffer size the better in terms of latency but the more it has a potential to crackle and if you have a USB headphones and USB microphone, the clock may not match very well. It might be more prone to crackling. So I would try to keep that higher in that case. If you're able to, to plug everything into one device, say like a Blue Yeti or something, anything that has a headphone jack and is also a microphone, then you won't have to worry about that. It's all one clock. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the interfaces now. This is pretty much all you're done. Assuming you have an audio interface and you don't use ASO for all, what you're gonna select is your audio interface. Once you have those steps properly followed, your ASL Link Pro should look pretty much the same as this, minus the 7 and 8. Go ahead and ignore that. That's just so I can get my audio to OBS because to control my audience so I couldn't blah, 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 blah. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is click load and we're going to go to our everything needed ASL Link Pro and then we're going to load Ableton Chad. And this is going to, for you, probably be blank. And the reason it's blank is you can go ahead and close this. Forgive the car driving by. Go to Options, Preferences, Audio. We're going to go to Input Config. I'm going to enable all the inputs down to like 15 and 16. 
and then we're going to go to output config and enable just down to 7 and 8. And I'll explain why you do that later. So now your ASLink Pro should work pretty much the same as this. So now your ASL Link Pro should look pretty much identical to mine. We're done with that now. We're going to go ahead and change our sample rate in Ableton to 48 kilohertz. Literally the only reason I did that is if you're doing this for Discord, obviously, you know, if you're using it for another thing where audio is more important, you know, if you want to quantize and slush it down and blah, 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 blah higher sample rate, but if you're doing it for Discord, 48 is the only one that Discord supports. I also recommend using this time to go into your settings for your whatever interface you have. For you, it could be, a, if it's a focus right, there'll be a little F down here or something. I have an Evo. Go to setup or whatever setting will be where your buffer size is. Try to get that as low as possible. I used 128. Seems to be the kind of the Goldilocks zone. The general rule of thumb there is the lower the buffer size, the lower the latency. However, the more CPU you're going to use. There's so many cars driving by right now and on top of that the higher the sample rate the lower the latency and obviously you know more processing but anyway let's move on so now that we have the audio side done let's go ahead and knock the plugins out assuming you have plugins installed go ahead and do vst3 and just turn turn on vst3 system folders it's the easiest way to find your vst3 plugins assuming that's what you installed i'll show how to find vst2 plugin folders as well we're going to go where it says off right here and where it says browse for VST2, we're going to click browse and we're going to go to where our VST2 plugin folder is. For me, it's in program files and it's just called VST plugins. I'm going to select that. It's going to auto scan. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably looking at the light and you're thinking, holy shit, I hate the way this looks. So now it's another really good time to go look and feel and turn it to dark because that's so much better. Anyway. Let's move on with the rest of the actual setup. And that's going to be going to file, open live set, and we're gonna to go to our everything needed folder, open up template project, and then we're gonna go into template.als. What this is is a really, really solid template for pretty much anything you could need, running your Spotify audio through, if you're an instrumentalist, running your guitar through, your microphone, your desktop audio, this is gonna be Windows default, and an efficient way to route audio out, which in this case is gonna be with these return tracks. And I'll explain why we have one for Discord in a little bit, but the rest should be pretty self-explanatory. And now's a really good opportunity to go to our speakers section, go to sounds, and we're gonna open up the sound control panel. We're gonna to go to the recording tab and make sure that our Mixo One is set not only as a default device, but a default communication device. And we're gonna to go to the playback tab and make sure that our speakers O one is set as also, you know, default communication. It's really important for certain programs, say like Call of Duty and shit like that, they have to be set to default communication. And now we're gonna go ahead and get into the audio routing side. We're gonna focus on the browser track and the Spotify track. For our browser, all we gotta do is open up Google or whatever browser you use, go to YouTube, start any video. And while we have that video playing, we're gonna go, oh, is it a Shark Tank? We're gonna go to the open sound settings, app volume and device preferences. And we're gonna find that Google Chrome tab where it says default. We're gonna go ahead and set that to speakers 03 that's going to put it on our browser track and we can forget that now let's we'll go ahead and close that for spotify it's the exact same idea we're just going to open up a spotify play a song go to the sound settings and where your spotify is default except for this one we're going to do speakers 04 and that's going to put it onto the Spotify track. That way we have that separated as well. Now, realistically, the purpose of that is really more or less if you're like a streamer or something and you want your stream audio to not have music in it, but your headphones will. Uh, yeah, pretty simple. Let's move on to the outputs. So the main output that we're going to focus on right now is recording, which is going to be reserved for things like OBS and whatever recording software you might use. And that's pretty simple. I'm just going to go into settings. I'm going to go to audio. I want to make sure my desktop audios are both disabled and my mic auxiliary audio, the first one, we're going to set that to mix 03. And then we're going to click OK. And now all of the audio that I send to the recording track, which in this case you just see send, that's going to go to OBS. Pretty simple. Uh, if you're coming for, to this with friends who also use Ableton and you just so happen to be wondering why my sends right here are little blocks with numbers instead of the usual circle, that's just because I've collapsed them so that way I can type specific numbers into them. If you don't want that and you want the circles, just expand it. I think the last thing we're going to need to talk about is why I have this Discord send and this is completely optional. I still recommend it, but this is for if you want to send a stereo high quality signal to discord allowing you to have high quality music and guitar and all that stuff and this is based on having the stereo plugin which is in the description uh it's part of the everything needed folder i'll show you how to install that in a little bit the only thing you need to remember 
for this is go into your input device, make sure it's set to Mix02, and your output device is set to Speakers02. Then we're going to scroll down. I like to go ahead and turn off automatic input sensitivity, and I crank that number way down because I do my own background noise removal. Scroll down. Make sure echo cancellation and noise reduction are both set to off, but automatic gain control is turned on. Sorry for the throat noises. Finally, make sure audio subsystem is set to legacy. That's going to restart Discord. Don't worry about that. Now, as for the plugin, we're going to go ahead and close Discord so I can demonstrate the installation of that, which is in the Everything Needed folder. It's going to be in the Discord stereo section. We're going to run the Better Discord Windows EXE, and we're going to click Accept, Next, Next, and we're going to click Discord, Install, that's going to install Better Discord, and we're going to open that up now. This is going to look a little inaccurate on my end because I already have plugins, but forget that. We're going to go down to the Plugins section, Open Plugins folder. It's going to open up the Plugins folder, and then we're going to copy the Stereo Sound plugin, and we're going to paste it into here. Easy peasy. Now Discord will detect that we have that. It's going to prompt you to download Xeris Plugin Library. Go ahead and download that, and then make sure you turn both that and the Xeris Plugin Library on. And quick disclaimer. There's going to be pop-ups that say Thank Loop It from the Stereo Sound plugin. If you want to turn those off, click the settings and turn off Enable Toast. Now we're done with that. Let's move on to setting it up to sound as good as possible. Once again, we're inside of Ableton. And in this case, I'm going to really focusing on the Discord track. For the highest possible quality audio on Discord, we're going to want to load this lossless Discord.wave onto it. To do that, the easiest way is to really just use an impulse response loader. In this case, I'm going to use Fox Single Bug X, which I have here in the folder. We're going to run that. Now we install it, accept the agreement. We really, all we have to do is just turn on VST3 for 64-bit, turn everything else off, click Next, Install, and that's done. Now we're going to go into Ableton. We're going to go to Options, Preferences, Plugins. If you haven't already clicked VST3 Plugin System Folders, go ahead and click that, and then click Rescan. Now it's found BugX. We can click on our Discord track, which is on the far right, the return track. We can search for BugX, scroll down and click All Results, and then we can either drag it down to the Drop Audio Effects window, or we can just double click it. And now here's a couple of important things we gotta do. Double click this little dot there, the pink one. Turn off the amp section, turn off the reverb section, click file, and in this case the file we're looking for is going to be in everything needed, Discord stereo folder. Go inside that and we're going to click lossless Discord. After that we're going to turn down the output by 8 dB because we have automatic gain control on in Discord. It's going to automatically turn us back up. That's going to prevent the bass from clipping. And we're done with that. Now you have really high quality Discord audio. And with that I believe we're just about done with the setup. Let me quickly explain how it all works. So when you're in a video game, it's going to be using your Windows default device, which in this case is going to be Game Mic. So any track that you want to be heard by a video game, you're going to want to turn up A on. For this example, Mic 1 and Guitar are both going to video games and things like Omegle, anything that uses the Windows default microphone. B is going to go to your headphones. C, we already went over earlier, is going to go to things like OBS or whatever their recording software you might be using. And then finally D is going to go to Discord. That's the whole setup. Thanks for watching.